so, so <coughs> maybe just now give a really nice example kind of beyond this simple exponential intervals <coughs> you can see the such uh, thing which is not a polynomial yeah exponent of x is not polynomial now let's try to do all this machinery which we have in these situations what are critical points right, derivative of x is equal to zero and then it implies that exponent of x is equal to one and it implies that x in two pi i z it has infinitely many uh, critical points and critical values it's again 2 pi i z hope we can make this calculation Ex exponent of 2 pi integers minus 1 cancels minus 2 pi integers it's, it's 2 pi z yeah. okay so we get infinitely many points and now we are looking for these integrals and the uh, left shift symbols blah 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 and one of left shift symbols left shift symbol for h bar positive at that point uh, z0 equal to 0 uh, and uh, actually sex is, is equal to 0 uh, at this uh, point uh, uh, is actually is R CT you can see it's R1 it's uh, just real numbers and if you draw a function on R and if you draw a function f of x uh, it's f of x is equal to x square root 2 plus how the terms yeah it take exponent, remove first two terms, maybe we can write x, x306, yeah, c factorial plus, yeah, so it uh, has minimum at x equal to zero and goes to plus infinity. And then this integral is very well convergent, so we have the integral, now let's calculate this integral of r. Okay. One of which bar? Yeah, first I substitute what I integrate, exponent minus huh? uh, now we make uh, uh, denote y equal to exponent of h bar. So continue my calculation. It will be again, one of square root of h bar, and integrate from zero to infinity. Exponents minus y minus one minus log y of h bar dy over y. Yeah. Uh, there is some factor which I can immediately put on the front. And here take exponent y bar, y bar, and denote by t will be y divided by h bar. So it's again the same factor. And here I could get another factor. And this is gamma fu gamma function. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, um, this thing is uh, gamma function and if h bar 
is 1 over n, where n is integer. Uh, uh, then um, what you what you see that uh, this this integral I don't know something like a uh, okay this integral uh, is equal to n factorial divided by n to power n. to be n factorial divided by n to power n, square root of 2 pi exponent minus n, square root of 2 pi n, uh, which is goes to 1 by Stirling formula. And then we'll have a symptotic expansion. 1 plus 1 over 12 n inverse plus 1 over n minus 2. These things. We get some the series, um, which actually I denote by coefficients of the series denote by Stirling numbers. It's a series of the rational coefficients in h bar. H bar is equal to one over n here, and. Uh, Ah, so this is exponent of the series with values of Riemann zeta negative integers divided by n. Okay, so we get uh, uh, this expansion. Mm. We have actual integral, so now I denote uh, something like I right of h bar. I denote uh, the things which I calculated. It's for real part of h bar positive. I defi define this function. And and I define LH bar will be uh, 1 over I R of minus H bar for real part of H bar negative. Uh, so what here goes on? We get uh, one series, yeah? 1 plus 1 over 12, blah, blah, blah. I, c I claim that it will be the same series at any critical other critical points. The, uh, the integral will have the absolute after this uh, uh, rescaling by critical value, will have absolutely the same expansion everywhere. If you sh shift x by 2 pi i, uh, then exponent of uh, if you variable x by 2 pi i, then function f shifted by also by multiple of 2 pi i, and that exponent will multiply by, by exponent to the constant, which we, we cancel. Yeah, so this series will have, it will have the same series at every point. And so this is i k, so uh, I, I real, no, no, right, I real, yeah, right, right and left. Well, right and left. Right, right and left, yeah. And uh, what here goes on? Although we have infinitely many points, actually interesting function we have only one of uh, only kind of uh, only one, but depends on the, on the choice of st stock sector, and we, and there will be two sectors because all directions goes to vertical line. Will be function on the right hand right plane and left hand plane, and. So we get this uh, now. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. 
So in Borel plane we have we have such picture of uh, singularities in the Borel planes, in the Borel plane, and all, all series are the same. And uh, numbers n alpha beta I'll show you in in a second. But what goes in H bar plane? In H bar plane. We have uh, just uh, two rays, and we can see the function i r here and i l here, and uh, and then there will be two formulas. What will be jump formulas? If h bar uh, uh, belongs to i r positive, uh, the formula will be that. I left of h bar is equal to I right of h bar. So remember, just write it more uh, uh, big. So for, 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 for positive part, we'll get I left of h bar is equal to I right of h bar multiplied by uh, 1 minus something very close to 1 on vertical things, you get exponent minus 2 pi i over h bar. And similarly for h bar in negative part, uh, you get almost the same formula. I, I, I'll take maybe, I go maybe all to clockwise direction. take the same function, maybe of inverse variable, take inverse of this, yeah. And, uh, and from this uh, story, one can deduce what a, uh, mm. oh, sorry, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, 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 it's too bad, yeah. Maybe just you're interested on this matrix of n alpha beta, it's something integers by integers because uh, critical points are labeled by integers. It's, it's up to some small mistake. It's kind of zero on diagonal because the things defend only for different numbers. And uh, you get something like minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one for one side. And matrix feels I can see the expansion of this guy. You get a series with coefficients 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And here it's, it's 1 minus 1. Yeah, so it get essentially 2. Uh, mm, this matrix of Stokes indices. Mm, yeah, so it's all uh, very nice. And finally, we want, we want to ask, what is this function, multivalued function phi? Sorry? <coughs> How do you get that relation between IL and IR? Ah, no, this relation you, you check using usual rules for gamma function. Oh, it's it's a complement formula. Complement formula, yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in fact, it's also formulas from this Stokes matrices, uh, uh, this intersection number game on, uh, on this in non algebraic variety, but you, you draw curves and count. You count intersection numbers for left symbols, and you get this table, you, you get this formula. Uh, Four more questions. Before you said n alpha beta was Q-symmetric. It's no. not, it's, no, it's Q-symmetric for only for nearest. And if it's not nearest, you take kind of like inverse to transpose matrix, something like this. So it's, it's a bit more. Mm. Mm. That's exactly the case. Yeah, and uh, um, the question, what is function phi here, yeah? 
Yeah, I, I, I explain you answer it. It's, 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 it's really one second way to deduce this answer. Uh, in my general uh, story, I explain what is local system function fine. We have even number of variables. And here's this only one variable. How to go from one variable to even variable? You add stupid Gaussian integral. So you, you, it's kind of the same story. You uh, instead of function of one variable, consider function of two variables. You consider f tilde is equal to exponent x1 minus 1 minus x1 plus x2 squared over 2. And volume element will be dx1, dx2. You, you just add extra variable. And uh, it doesn't change, its critical points will be the same, you just zero in this extra variable. And because in the integral you, you divide by, x, uh, with this normalization, it doesn't change anything. I just uh, the integral ga I get Gaussian integral in extra variable. Um, so it doesn't change the story. Now I go to the case of even number of variables, actually two variables, m equal to one, yeah? And it's very nice. It's get zero's derivative of function of volume. So it's volume of a fiber. And that immediately gives you f formula for this phi. Yeah, so David, you wrote a long paper, but I, I claim it's really one second with this formula. But just, you have just a uh, volume of the fiber, which is very simple. Uh, and then this function phi uh, is equal to 1 over 2 pi, because uh, 2 power 1, yeah integral over df over fiber uh, which is uh, <coughs> and uh, suppose x1 x2 are two small positive real variables you get a small circle because it's very close to sum of two, two squares and then you get 1 over 2 pi uh, you can enter ah because because this form, you can easily calculate, you can replace by dx1 of divided over x2. Because differential f tilde with respect to x2, you get dx2. You get dx1 divided by x2. And then you get immediately get 1 over 2 pi uh, twice integral, because there are two uh, things on the fiber, dx divided by square root of 2 zeta minus f of x, x is equal to x1, and to integrate for x between uh, uh, two points, x minus x plus, uh, uh, where f, f of x minus is equal to f of x plus is equal to zeta. You imagine that zeta is positive variables, very, very small, and x1, x2 are also real variables, very, very small, so you can write some of the integral, or you can write is a can you leave blackboard? Yeah, I can leave with blackboard. Yeah, or you can write as a one over two pi i. You make contour integral something in a complex plane surrounding to zero, and divide by do, to x, and divided by two f of x minus zeta. Uh, I put i because I change sign of this guy. And, uh, and you get this kind of contour integral, and from this contour integral, it's kind of obvious this has endless and leak continuation. You, where I, you have some kind of hyper elliptic curve with infinite genus. Um, this is like polynomial of infinite degree. You get hyper elliptic curve of infinite genus, you get some cycle here, and it will be holonomy of uh, the first homology of this hyper elliptic curve of infinite genus. Uh, so everything is very explicit. But the derivation of the formula is really one second. You don't have, don't have to do any work with this. Mm. Mm. In integrals. Okay. Yeah, so that's a uh, nice, very concrete example. And uh, I'll just make, just to make a finish. Uh, there was something which I removed. Uh, maybe I'll start to clean the whiteboard. Uh, I remove the formula, if we have to close the singularity, it gets asymptotic formula for coefficient in terms of coefficients for another singularities. 
And the claim is the following. You get this stocks numbers. Stock 0 is equal to 1. Stocks 1 is equal to 1 over 12. And so you get some numbers which grow factorially. So what example? Ah, no, I consider. So you still continue? I, I, I still continue. I ca continue that example? Or, or? I, it's the same example. It's still. Uh, it's the same example. It's, there's no more examples. Yeah. Yeah, you get these numbers. And then mm, different kind of like to write a formula, it's better, it's kind of rational numbers, yeah? Uh, uh, to write nice formula, I, it's better to modify them. It will be no longer rational numbers, it will be proportional powers of Q. And then there are two things. Uh, mm, there will be two formulas. The trouble is that in this picture, to point zero, you get two closest points, plus 2 pi i and minus 2 pi i. So it should contribute, take, take care of both of them. And then if you analyze eventually uh, what goes on, it turns out that there are two formulas. If you consider even number, Stokes numbers, divided by k factorial, Then it will have the following asymptotic expansion as k goes to infinity even. You take stocks number one divided by k, k n minus one plus uh, and you have similar story for odd numbers. OK, just look on this expression. It's, it's really beautiful. So you have kind of even uh, uh, stocks numbers with even and odd coefficients, yeah? And you won't consider asymptotic of stocks things with odd coefficients, with very large k. And the main term controls, uh, or even coefficients, the main term controls so, so stocks indices with odd coefficients, but for small k. And vice versa. Yeah, so it's, uh, so it's this kind of, another way of kind of resurgence. You start from your series, what a sequence of numbers, have asymptotic expansion like this, you get another sequence of numbers, get asymptotic expansion, you return to original sequence of numbers. Yeah, so it's uh, because of these two closest singularities, they kind of, re this kind of really, after two steps, you re reproduce uh, uh, original uh, numbers. It's, uh, it's like you talk about when you talk about just two closes singularities with nothing else. Again, one uh, from one can extract another, and applying twice, you get back to original series. And here it's the same story. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, yeah, so it's some kind of beautiful asymptotics uh, and uh, these relations of large and small uh, kind of small uh, small uh, numbers with small indices controlled behave for large for large indices. Uh, um, so we will see generalization to quantum dialogram of this of the same of, of the same story in, in the in the last I think in the last lecture yeah okay now I will go to kind of more abstract subject. Uh, of analytic wall crossing structure trying to generalize, I don't know, this things with uh, kind of third column of my lecture.
sor... Uh. Let's r r recall what was our situation. Yeah. Uh, so, so for exponential integrals, uh, what we have, we get finite number of stocks raised. Yeah. We get functions a alpha h bar, which are holomorphic. Uh, in sectors, and maybe c infinity on the boundary, uh, c infinity on the boundary, uh, and um, they have the same expansion, uh, have collection of functions when uh, alpha belongs to some kind of finite set. Uh, we get finitely many uh, functions uh, in each, uh, and then they define sectors. Uh, we have with the same. Asymptotic expansion at h bar equal to zero, what, what's called a formal, some form power series, but there are different analytic functions. And when we cross the ray, cross the ray, we, we will say that kind of i, i, whatever, kind of uh, maybe minus of h bar, or, or, I don't know in which direction you cross is equal to a h plus of h bar plus sum of a certain finite sum of n alpha beta exponent we get uh, some formulas like this so, so why do finitely many, many rays uh, no no in the case of fi exponential integrals when i get finitely many it's assumption when i have exponential integral for algebraic variety uh, when I get finitely many p points, I get finitely many rays. Okay, we get formula like this, yeah? Mm. And, uh, and then we glue, uh, uh, and then we glue some vector bundle, yeah? Uh, uh, by this transformation rules. Now this, this Stirling formula, We have only uh, we have only one function. I don't know uh, the infinitely many series, but they all coincide with each other. We have just just one function. Outside uh, uh, two rays. We have just one function, and it satisfies this property. If I cross the ray, it's h plus uh, plus uh, some exponential small terms uh, we get certain uh, some like this uh, how to uh, see these things together Oh, maybe uh, I no longer need the Stirling formula beauty. Okay, so just move it. So the uh, generalization is the following common generalization. Uh, which will appear in the cases one form n next lecture and with quantum dialog on the first lecture as well. Namely, uh, suppose what uh, we have the following gadget, uh, following situation. We get finite collection of numbers. And a finitely generated abelian group. And finite rank lattice. Maybe alpha will be, this is for 1 to n, something like this, finitely many lattice. We get some lattice as a marker to the m, and which maps to c by some uh, linear additive map, which I called z0. Uh, just, just how it embedded to complex numbers. Mm. 
Mm. And uh, and we get functions e alpha h bar. We, we argument we h bar belong to some. Uh, uh, it's a bit hard to say what it's. Uh, it's belong to a ray, generic ray. Uh, and in principle, what would like uh, to see some some wall crossing formulas like this. Uh, how do you know it? It's something like if you cross kind of bad direction. Uh, uh, I alpha plus h bar and here we'll get some infinite sum Yeah, so, uh, so I want to treat my uh, kind of stealing formal example uh, uh, like this. Uh, I have just one singularity, zero, uh, because the rest is the same functions. So the kind of alpha is zero, n equal to one, and m equal to one, and, and the lattice gamma zero will be two pi i z. It will be various shifts which appear, it will be kind of an additional story. And in exponential integrals, uh, the alpha will be critical values, and gamma zero will be zero. Will be, these things will be absent. <coughs> yeah, so, uh, so the case with some closed one form, which we'll see uh, next lecture, will be natural generalized uh, Common generalization of what? Of oh, Stirling formula and uh, exponential integral with uh, algebraic variety. And we get um, more functions. Sorry? Why we need d0? Did, did you write d0? Why write d0? Yeah. Because it's. Uh, uh, What is going on? I just want to uh, relate to some wall crossing structure and some lattices. I want to introduce a, la a bigger lattice. It will be a root lattice of of uh, Dinkin diagram A n. So it's isomorphic to z to power n minus one, kind of, and plus gamma zero. introduces kind of larger monstrous lattice and it will have a mm, mm. so what is m now m is uh, it's additional it's sorry it started life as n no no it's m no it's m so and it was number of, uh, of my interesting series, uh, have num and distinct series. But oh, in critical points. And critical values. And values. Oh, oh, okay. critical, critical, critical points, yeah. Critical points. Yeah, but critical values because it thinks a multi-value. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. for the sake of those who encourage to, to write the yeah, okay. gamma zero is absent in your notation. Oh, sorry. This is gamma zero. Okay, you're right, yeah. This was gamma zero, and now I make a larger lattice. I kind of uh, combine together uh, one thing with another, and I get a big central charge, 
without zero to C, uh, which is uh, usual gamma, uh, uh, um, uh, which is Z zero on, on, on the second part, whatever it is, and if it maps Uh, kind of uh, uh, this vector in a root lattice maps to the uh, whatever the alpha minus the beta, something like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so get mm, this big Lie algebra, uh, li weak lattice, and, and now I want to consider some Lie algebra, uh, namely. The rank of the root lattice of a n is z to the n. It's not z to the n minus one. Sorry. The rank of the root lattice of a n is z to the n. Oh, and yeah, we write n minus one. Yeah, you're right, n minus one. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're completely right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, now I consider the following Lie algebra. It will be matrices of size n by n in, let's say, with coefficients in Laurent polynomials with m variables. Okay. Uh, And as a claim that uh, this uh, uh, Lie algebra is graded by uh, uh, put here should go zero uh, it's graded by elements of this big uh, lattice, namely uh, algebra of matrices uh, is graded by uh, like uh, matrices indices alpha beta goes to corresponding root alpha minus beta and here have monomial it gives you element of this lattice gamma zero. Yeah, so get uh, 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 kind of part of the, uh, the whole story about fall crossing, it's about some lattice of finite rank, maps to complex numbers of this lattice, and Lie algebra graded by this lattice of finite rank. Okay. Yeah, so, so we want to have this formulas like this. And uh, it's kind of an example which I considered before when you get uh, either gamma zero is trivial or get Stirling formula, we get finitely many rays. Uh, but in more complicated situation, we get infinitely many uh, rays. It's, you get every, 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 something everywhere dense. And then, then we start to glue some vector bundle uh, using uh, some kind of this transformation. So as a part of data, your latest gamma does not have bali some bilinear form? No, 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 nothing. That's latest, yeah, I don't, don't need it at all, yeah. And could you, uh, could you pull down the front uh, uh, port just a little bit? Down? Ah, oh, there's nothing special here. Okay. What does the summing range in the formula above say? So one less than uh, equal to alpha comma beta less than n? Yeah, and gamma belongs to the six. So you don't sum over alpha, right? Sum over, ah, sum over... Ah, so, <laughs> Ah, some of beta, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, so, sorry, you're right, some of beta. And here, and here, what I really want here, this thing will be exponentially decay along the ray. It will be kind of tri uh, identity transformation plus exponential small terms. But, but the last term does not depend on gamma zero. It's just the uh, i beta. H bar, yeah. 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 That does not depend on this gamma vector. Oh no 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 no! Uh, there are finitely many series, yeah. finitely many functions here. Yeah. Believe this, yeah. Uh, 
Now, so you want to do this some kind of gluing, but uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, the way to kind of pre-analytic wall crossing structure is given by the following. Mm. Uh, uh, so it will be something which you will use to glue to glue bundle. So first things it's a finite collection of rays. So it will be not stocks rays, it will be some kind of There's something which I choose at my will. It has nothing to do with the central charge. For example, I can use three or four. I, I, I maybe need what I really need is that uh, the sectors will have strictly less than 180 degrees. Three or four is enough. I can just from the very beginning I choose like coordinate axis. Uh, uh, mm. But three sinus, and then for each ray, uh, rays I, maybe rays I denote something like L one, L two, the cyclically ordered rays. L, uh, Lj will be exponent two pi uh, i c to j times real numbers. I take this race, and for each ray Lj, I want to uh, um, modify tri trivialized bundle uh, along this ray. Uh, so what I have for each ray, I have some transformation. I don't know some kind of like Gj is equal to uh, uh, oh, oh, sorry, there's a transformation maybe could you know something like Ij. Uh, which is a uh, which belongs to mm, matrices matrices of size n by n and some kind of like series in these variables uh, some infinite sums uh, uh, Certain support property. Uh, which will be the following. It's, uh, it, it will be uh, identity plus high terms will be exponent of some elements. Which belongs to uh, kind of completely algebra, and this elements uh, log j it will be sum of a graded coefficients in my lattice. Yeah, it will be infinite sum and gamma should belong to certain cone. Uh, and gamma is not equal to zero. Uh, so in my uh, this huge lattice, whatever it is, I should choose some convex cone uh, and take some of integer lattice on this, along this convex cone. And the property uh, uh, is the following: the central charge. Uh, restricted to the uh, to the scone uh, should should be the following map. It first, should be proper map 
and then the project to certain angle sector. And image is contained in uh, mm, Mm, uh, half plane uh, 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 kind of orthogonal to LJ, and um, and sh and the things should be strictly less than 180 deg uh, 90 degrees for each side, so it doesn't touch the boundary. So this cone will project to something like this, and if consider integer points, they will go get discrete subset in this uh, in in this angle sector. And uh, the last thing. These coefficients should have exponential growth. Uh, this thing should have exponential growth. Uh, and uh, now I want to make a gluing along of trivial bundle along, along this uh, straight lay LG. I take exponent, uh, I take this element of Lie algebra. Uh, it, will, it will be very, very close to zero because I take, uh, by this condition, I get exponential decay. And then it will be converged for some small h bar because of exponential growth. And uh, in this way, I can, it will be well defined um, mm, mm, uh, gluing. Uh, Procedure uh, for t for trivial bundles on the left and on the right of, of the ray. Yeah, so so the things are not stock sectors. I kind of organize in some arbitrary uh, way. So what happens geometrically? Uh, uh, we get this finite collection of cones in a high dimensional lattice, and these cones can overlap. Overlap in uh, gamma tensor R, and their projections, they also can overlap. So you get a uh, kind of uh, uh, cyclically ordered sequence of cones, which can overlap. And the project projections are, again, can overlap and cover uh, the whole planes. And the, the each sector sits in its own half plane. OK, so I get this, this picture. And then make can glue a bundle. And actually, it's uh, of rank M, yeah, rank N, over a germ, kind of domain when h bar is sufficiently small. Uh, why it should be sufficiently small? Because the series, it will be substitute series in exponents. Uh, and uh, when h bars will be like it, could be stopped to be convergent. Yeah, so get uh, six defined only on neighborhood of h0. And uh, you have a holomorphic vector bundle. Yeah, in fact, this kind of technically, it's not so easy to say why you get holomorphic vector bundle. Uh, one uh, way is, uh, uh, I can write, of course, define, you have Riemann Hilbert problem, you can set a function here, here, define, maybe uh, extend it in a slight neighborhood of the sectors and then overlap the given by some transformation formula. And the function has asymptotic expansions. Uh, but why the things has solution? Uh, the way to do is the following: you make again a real blow up of of circle uh, uh, of point zero. Mm, uh, uh, your complex plane C will be quotient by uh, C. Uh, by this gluing, you make uh, you make a 
vector bundle, uh, C infinity vector bundle on this thing. Uh, then it will be trivialized over circle. And on the quotient, it will be C have C infinity bundle with complex structure. It's integrable. <laughs> and then by new Landon Nuremberg theorem, you see that everyone can also glue nonlinear bundles. Yeah, it's it's kind of non-trivial. It's really use like going from C infinity integrable complex structure. It's the same as holomorphic. Things are explaining extension to zero. Uh, yeah, how, no, how to define the glued, glued bundle? What what you really do? You do real oriented real blob. You consider uh, h bar equal to zero. Yeah. You consider arc h bar long to arc to z and Absolute value h bar belongs to zero plus infinity. Maybe uh, then by this gluing, uh, 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 this gluing is you, you forget that your bundle is holomorphic first. Uh, uh, then you, you glue, you make it C infinity bundle here, but here it's kind of canonically trivialized in a formal neighborhood of of this circle. You can contract the formal things to to the point to get C infinity bundle, and it will have complex structure. And it will be C infinity everywhere, <laughs> and then um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of analytic. It's a bit uh, awful. One can also write some explicit formula, some convergence series, but um, mm. yeah. So you, you do this procedure. So in the end of the day, you want to conclude that it's a holomorphic bundle over C. O over neighborhood of oh, sorry. Over neighborhood, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Uh, then, but this bundle, uh, what uh, what's happened? So it's canonically trivialized over form power series because all my gluings has zero Taylor expansion, trivial Taylor expansion as exponents. It's canonically trivialized, and then what is going on? You choose holomorphic, choose any tri holomorphic trivialization of the gluing bundle. And then compare with this guy, you get element, I don't know, some kind of, some element T belonging to GLN form power series in H bar. You compare one trivialization with another trivialization. You get, but if you if you change this guy, you you multiply on the left by GLN germs of analytic function. You get quotient uh, set of uh, GLO form power series over GLO convergence series, and this is well defined because if you yeah. So the story is that it's mm. all this machinery gives you elements in this coset, GL of form power series, GL of uh, 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 analytic series, and uh, that's for me will be kind of like the main invariant of the whole story. Uh, uh, so uh, this what whatever any ways to gluing produce some element of the set, and other ways produce another element of the set. In, in principle, one can imagine some kind of more complicated story where one can involve something like exponent one over h bar square, uh, some different things. Yeah, so one can put more and more material and depending on series and more and more variables, and still produce this element of this concept uh, for you know, form power series model analytic guys. Is this not understood as some type of malbranche Sibuya cohomology set? Or Sorry? Like? Is this quotient not understood as some type of malbranche Sibuya cohomology set? Maybe, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's it's you beyond my knowledge. I have to say, yes, it's okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so. Mm, uh, I don't know. Maybe yes, I don't know. No, it's not the stock state. It's, it's, it's nothing about position of singularity, just it's just element. This element of the uh, Yeah, 
Yeah, no, 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 of course, this bundle depends on the uh, st stock indices and singularities, yeah, but uh, that's the way it's. I don't really want know what to say. Uh, and uh, why I uh, use this pre analytical crossing structure is a claim that the different guys can produce the same element in the coset set space. So different. Uh, different collection of this finite collection of rays and, and this analytic uh, sums, convergent sums, produce the same story. Pre-analytic all crossing structures produce the same uh, class in, in JLN or form power series modular JLN over convergent functions. And what are uh, the obvious rules of the game? Kind of uh, the modifications which you can do. The first modification is the following. Keep the same uh, element uh, um, uh, CJ, uh, this cone J. Uh, on J, the same elements AJ, but uh, rotate a little bit rays uh, because this condition is open uh, to stay in the in the half plane. We can rotate just a little bit; it will it will be and don't, without changing cyclic order. So it gives the same bundle and gives the same uh, uh, realization. Yeah. Mm. Then the second procedure is kind of st 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 stupid. Uh, increase a little bit. Con J, keeping the same AJ and LJ. We just interpret it since it's series in uh, support and larger things, but uh, extra mm, 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 that kind of uh, uh, Fourier coefficients will be zero for the story. Uh, yeah, so one can make it a bit larger, so to, to produce the same story. O also, one can split. Uh, one can write uh, AJ uh, decompose in the product of two uh, things in the same cone. Choose any decomposition. Uh, and replace my ray LJ. by two uh, slightly uh, rotated rays, and we put the same cone. Uh, uh, then we say that this, com this gluing is the composition of these two gluings. Yeah, so it, again, we get the same bundle with the same trivialization. And uh, so we can split things um, apart. 
And what can happen, the support of the things will be in a small cone, we can replace by small things that can rotate for everyone. And for a uh, converse procedure, we can uh, uh, in inverse 2, 3. Suppose we have two very close uh, elements and uh, put here in the same cone, uh, whatever, Lj, Lj plus 1, and we replace by just 1. <laughs> Uh, and uh, replaces a product by the product, if, if again, will will sit in uh, support. So, so we have some kind of freedom of movement here uh, between such guys. Uh, so what, what really happens, we can see the quotient of pre-analytic uh, analytical crossing structure. I'll give this kind of uh, first preliminary definition. It's the quotient of this pre-analytic pre -analytical crossing structure by this equivalence relations. We, we start to uh, change number of rays, uh, but gluing essentially the same bundle. Yeah, it's, in what happens is that uh, some domains can disappear, uh, can shrink to zero, disappear, so one can't really compare analytic function one domain and another domain, because uh, it will be different domains, they can appear and disappear by the shrinking. Mm. Yeah, so so, so definition, uh, analytic wall crossing structure uh, is, equ is equivalence, equ equivalence class of pre-analytic wall crossing structure model is this one, two, three, four uh, moves. Equivalence relation generated by this moves. Mm. How to understand it? Mm. Yeah, so we, we have a uh, Ziane paper uh, three years ago. We formulated uh, in, in, in different uh, setup, but we developed the whole story. Actually, I never explained the story because it's kind of very. T in a sense, it's no nice formulas. It's kind of very, it just move cones, some, some kind of really no interesting mathematics in a sense goes on, except maybe one argument which I'll show to you. Uh, so how to understand it? Uh, one can define notion of formal wall crossing structure. Uh, what is different fr between formal and analytic? Uh, I have the same uh, I have the same story cones um, elements uh, no exp uh, I forget the uh, the the condition of exponential growth no condition on exponential growth mm. And this can be set in arbitrary gradiently algebra, forgetting about details. Now it makes sense for, for any gamma graded Lie algebra, let's say over rational numbers, and any central charge from gamma to C. And in this larger world of uh, when you forget about uh, uh, convergence issues, but we keep, tr keep track only about cones, N nothing else. And then uh, the claim that uh, in the formal world there exists canonical representative. Uh, Which is the following? Let's let's me explain like this. Uh, ah, first uh, this canonical uh, up to making this li little choice. So uh, let, let can make first first choice. Technical question: How much time do we need? Uh, maybe fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah? Okay. This this uh, is this technical uh, this uh, choice is the following. I have my sectors. Yeah like this, and then uh, what I should draw is uh, something uh, 
uh, I want to choose uh, some uh, angle sectors CJ, uh, half closed in angle sectors in C, such that CJ is contained in uh, LJ orthogonal half plane. And this, uh, and this joint union of this half flow sectors will be, let's say, C minus zero. They don't contain zero. And it will be half closed. I choose uh, uh, such guys. Then there exists canonical representative uh, such that element, whatever, AJ, uh, belong to the corresponding pro potent group. Uh, this log of AJ is uh, is supported on gamma non equal to zero, which belongs to this uh, pre images of this half closed sectors. So it's a completely uh, uh, independent and um, and uh, and such representatives exist and unique and unique. One can kind of uh, put back and forth and decompose the opposite direction, have canonical decomposition. Uh, then it's a, uh, one can formulate in terms of, uh, uh, and what, what, is, what, will, go o what is, will go on? You have gamma multiplied by R, which maps to C. Get kernel of this map. And you get kind of arbitrary, if consider log you get arbitrary elements of uh, Lie algebra supported on the things which is stay far, far away from the kernel of Z. It's, it's called support property. Mm. And uh, uh, effectively, one can really make canonical elements. One, in the sense of form series, one can decompose the composition for everywhere dense uh, uh, um, um, collection of rays, which are projections of straight rays, uh, integer rays upstairs, and, and the corresponding elements, uh, w uh, if you get some ray here, then you get, can be half, and you get half space here, and you get some Lie algebra associated to pronipotent Lie algebra corresponding to integer elements, uh, graded elements in this um, um, sector. Yeah, so, so you get uh, uh, this picture, uh, and this formal wall crossing structure appears in many areas of mathematics uh, without analytic condition whatsoever. They don't, don't just give any gluing, any co cycle at all, because we don't have analytic properties. But uh, it's very easy to work with them. And uh, for them, there is some, for example, on this formal wall crossing structure, this natural topology. And topology uh, is, uh, uh, can be easily described in this prayer. Uh, maybe formal wall crossing structures the following way. You start to deform a little bit central charge uh, without changing everything. Cones, <laughs> J, LJ, uh, uh, and it will be a, a notion of f uh, neighborhood. And there is a theorem that any connected component, it's a manifold, which is locally maps isomorphically to s space of central charges. change a bit z uh, without <coughs> changing every scale j, a j, uh, and con j here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so one can uh, change the central charge, transform one thing is another, and it's kind of the essence of our paper is how the six interact with this notion of analyticity. And it turns out that if you deform a formal wall crossing structure according to this topology, uh, then the, this property, uh, then the property to be analytic coming from some six things, it's, it's really intrinsic, it's, it's, it's preserved uh, mm, uh, by itself, and uh, there is a kind of one, essentially one technical result. You 
is the following. It's, it's reduced sexual question about two variables, maybe. Mm. Ah, maybe I can say the following. Suppose we have a cone, uh, some cone j, yeah, and divide by two pieces. And divide by two pieces. And suppose we have some element aj which is analytic. Uh, and uh, then I can uniquely decompose in the product of uh, elements wh whose logarithm has support on left hand side and right hand side. In, form po in formal uh, expressions, that's uh, just really canonical one to one correspondence. And maybe you choose kind of like maybe it's maybe half closed to one side and open for another side. You can ca have canonical decomposition, and the result, if hyperplane is rational, rational, then both two guys I gain gain ana analytic. Yeah, uh, uh, we don't know whether it's true for irrational hyperplanes. We spent many years trying to prove it. Maybe a bit more complicated. Got lost. Well, maybe not many years. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, we tried for many uh, many years ago. We tried to prove that. Yeah, <laughs> we failed. Yeah, okay. We, f we failed. Maybe, maybe it's true. Maybe not. Uh, 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 that's a bit hard to say. But uh, but for uh, for irrational hyperplanes. But for rational hyperplanes, it's easy, and it's reduced to the following questions. You can see the matrix in JLN, maybe in, in two variables. No, but you can embed them in rational. You can increase them and make it rational. You essentially, reduce the equation the following things. You suppose you have matrix. Uh, uh, and it's equal to identity plus high order terms in, in, in expansion. And then you decompose. Uh, by matrices, we support, let's say, in minus a plus, and you choose maybe diagonal belongs to one of them. Uh, then if this is analytic, then this guy is analytic. And um, roughly speaking, the argument goes the following. You can see the... Uh, ah, you can see the... You, you take maybe quotient of these things. You take double coset space. You kind of uh, ignore the stellar coefficients on the border of uh, 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 um, yeah, this correspond monomials for logarithm. You, you ignore two border terms, and these things can be sorted as the following. It's um, can be identified with the following things. You can see the P1 bundle over on the following thing. You can see the P1 cross P1. You can see the bundle on a, f on a neighborhood of two coordinate axes, which is trivial on vertical or horizontal pieces. Uh, so if you get some kind of non-homomorphic closed domain, if you can see the bundle trivial on the things, you can trivialize uh, over these pieces, over these things, and over this guy. And here you get, uh, here you get certain uh, transition metrics, but trivialization depends on the function of one variable, so you get this double coset space. So it can be considered as a bundle trivial on the things with property of triviality along certain two families of P1. And this decomposition can be understood the following. You have this family of P1, but maybe get, get additional blow up and consider kind of hyperbolas. X1 cross X2 equal to constant. Uh, then you get bundles on another family of things which are holomorphically trivial. And uh, you have kind of three families of lines on which is holomorphically trivial. And, uh, mm. and then by comparison, uh, and this comparison will give you 
uh, terms a minus n plus geometrically. One can interpret these things geometrically. And then if everything is holomorphic, you see the things are holomorphic. Things exist all form power series. And yeah, so that's the basic geometric arguments which uh, 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 gives uh, uh, um, invariance under deformations, which eventually it's useful to, f to formulate what is the notion of resurgence depending with parameters. When you think start to depend on some parameters, you want to say what is holomorphic depends on the parameters. It can be eventually formulated through this language. But now I think I should st stop and we should have lunch. Yeah, okay, thank you.